Hello guys, my name is Valkrishna Shivastav and welcome to Code with PK. So in this video, we write all these functions, okay, which are part two for integer array list class that we defined in the previous video. So before we begin, it is a request to please, please subscribe to my channel because out of 100 viewers, only three to five are subscribed, but the 95% of my audience is not subscribed and a subscription is very important. So please, please do subscribe to my channel. So let's begin. So we have already completed part one, which includes these two constructors and these two functions. Okay. And we were defining a class integer array list to store a list of integers, the underlying data structure being an array. Okay. So this is the progress that we have made so far. Okay. So when I share the code through the link in the description of this video, this code will be a must cleaner. I'll uh, clean all the comments here. Okay. All right. So we have to complete these functions, remove, remove all, remove element, add, insert, add, get array, add all, sort and iterator. Okay. All right. Let's start with the remove int. So public boolean remove int x. Okay. Remove the first copy of this integer from this array. All right. So if I have an array, all right, like this. Okay, uh, my number of elements are four. Any is short for number of elements and any is the data member that is storing number of elements. Okay, capacity is the capacity which is the length of the array. All right, so if my length of the array is four, that is capacity is four and number of elements are also four. Uh, a number of elements are also four, array is full. Indices are zero, one, two, three, seventeen, eight, twenty-three and four. Okay, if I have to remove say twenty-three, I cannot remove an individual location from an array. Once an array is allocated, you cannot add remove locations from that. Okay. When I say remove 23, I want the array to change to this 17, 8, all the values after 23 copied, which is just 4 and the remaining values go to 0 or we don't care what there is. Okay. Because number of elements now become 3 and capacity stays at 4 for indices 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so if we add the next value, say 48, all right, next value goes where number of elements uh, index is here. Okay, so any is 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 2, 17, 8, and 4, 4 was here as well, we add 48, so 48 goes into this index, which is index 3, all right, and number of elements now become 4, capacity is now Okay, so when I say remove an element, that is remove the copy of an element from the array and shift all the elements after that left one, so that element is removed and reduce the number of elements by one. So this entire process of removing an element from an array, I've already posted a separate video that explains how to remove an element from an array. And I'm going to use the same idea from there. You can find the link of that video in the description of this video. All right, let's take another example with a bigger array. So if this is my array, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and it has values 17, 8, 43, 11, 29, 36, and 55. Number of elements are 7, okay? Capacity is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 elements in a capacity of 8. If I want to remove, say, 11, so my array should ch ch change into 17, 8, 43. Everything before the index which is to be removed remains the same and everything after this index which is to be removed shift left once. So 29 comes here, 36 comes next, then comes 55 and the last two indices remain the same. Okay, so number of elements is now 6 for a capacity 8. So indices 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since cap number of elements are 6, next element will go here. So whatever here, will, here is will be overwritten just as it was. In this case okay so find the index where this element is okay I'll say int index is I use the index of function which is already written for this class that returns the first index the minimum index where this value is found so if the index is minus one it means this value is not present in this in this list so I return false okay otherwise I remove Okay, the value at this index, okay, remove the value at this index and you return true indicating a value, the value x was removed from this list. Okay, 
what we have to do is we have to start shifting from this index okay so if my index is in this case 3 so index 3 takes the value at index 4 index 4 takes the value of index 5 index 5 takes the value of index 6 all right that is why 29 comes at index 3 36 comes at uh, index 4 55 comes at index 5 okay so what you have to do is you have to start from i equal to index i is less than num elements minus 1 i plus plus okay so your i will start from here okay from which from the index which is to be removed to number of elements minus 1 which is still index 5 so index 3 4 5 index 3 takes the value of index 4 index 4 takes the value of index 5 index 5 takes the value of index 6 okay so basically array of i is array of i plus 1 and since we removed an element we say num elements minus minus okay so number of elements was 7 becomes 6 all right we can test this so let me just run this test we still have this printing statements okay so this is the last list we have so in this i try to remove 40 so i'm going to say remove 40 i'm going to say list one dot remove 40 okay so i should get a list which does not include 40 anymore and the size should reduce by one okay remove 40 i get rid of 40 and everything after 40 follows 50 200 100 200 okay then 10 7 11 2 3 4 till and my size is reduced by one capacity remains the same okay all right we can add another remove okay we can remove another value say i want to remove 12 okay so i'm going to say the same thing remove 12 remove 12 so when you remove 12 we get rid of this 12 so the size is now 70 okay all right next is remove all okay so i'm going to say remove all copies of this element so public boolean remove all int x so we can use remove and index of to remove all copies of x that is one way and there is another optimized way so first use remove and index of okay that is while as long as this element exists that is while index of x is not equal to minus one okay as long as index of returns a valid index that is x is, x is still there in this list i'm going to say remove x okay and you have to return true if a value was removed so i'm going to say boolean removed is false and i'll say removed is removed. okay so once this runs i can be assured that removed will be true because index of will not be minus one index of will be a valid index so this remove is going to return true and if this loop never runs removed is going to remain false so i simply return okay so when i use uh, run this again i can remove all copies of 200 right 200 has multiple copies so i can say remove all 200 remove all 200 so it should get rid of all the copies of 200 200 is gone another 200 is gone Shire size should reduce by 2 okay and all the other values remain the same in the same order okay do you have any other value which has multiple copies we have uh, 7 11 2 3 4 33 35 uh, we can change this to 39 okay so we will have two 39s okay so we have two 39s we can add 39 somewhere here as well okay right so we have 339s now okay now i can do remove all 39 39 39 and it should give me a list that does not contain 39 so when you remove all 200 okay so you reduce the capacity by size by 2 because this 200 is lost this 200 is lost 
then when you remove all 39 you lose this 39 this 39 this 39 size reduces by 3 and all the other values increases okay this is one way but this won't be very fast because each remove will be o n process all right the other way is use another temp array that is i create a temp array okay of the same size as array dot length okay i am going to iterate the original array and copy all those values which are not x okay so if i say int index is 0 so we iterate this entire list of elements okay and we add only values which are not equal to x so if array of i not equal to x we add it to this temp array at this index which starts from 1 okay else and else will be the condition if array i equal to x it's, it means we have found a value that we need to remove so i count num removed equal to 0 which is incremented by 1 and we can use num removed to set the flag remove because if number removed is greater than 0 removed is going to be true the number of elements now are equal to number of elements minus number removed and array is set to okay so we are creating a temp array which contains all the values not equal to x all right and then we update the remove flag we update the number of elements we set array to temp because it contains all the values not equal to x okay so commenting this which is just two lines of code we are going to use this method to remove all so let me run this okay so remove all 200 200 is lost 200 is lost okay and size is 16 now when you remove 39 all 39 39 39 is lost size reduced by 3 which was in the previous case of using this method as well so i'm going to stick with this method okay this is much more optimized okay next is public void remove element at so public void remove element at a particular index okay and since this is taking an index it will throw illegal argument exception if the index is not valid index is not valid if it, it valid if it is less than zero or index is greater than equal to num elements okay i throw new illegal argument exception invalid index plus index okay to remove an element at index we use this very idea okay we do this start with index we go till number of elements minus one i plus plus okay and we need to do some of elements okay and you can call this method okay remove element at and you can pass index so remove will work using remove element at okay so when we test our integer array list our remove should work fine remove 40 removes 40 so size is reduced by 1 remove 12 removes 12 okay between 39 and 24 size is 18 which is working fine so testing remove at remove at 3 okay list dot remove at element at element at 3 okay and then you print the list okay remove element is 0 1 2 3 50 is lost 50 is lost size is 12 okay running this again okay remove at 10 remove at 10 so remove at 10 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 33 is lost 33 is lost okay remove at 10 again okay we lose the last value which is 24 size is 10 now if i do remove at 10 again okay i will get a exception because right invalid index 10 okay so my remove at remove an element at a particular index is working and we have updated our remove function as well okay then the next is insert at this particular index okay so i'll say public uh, void insert int x at this index okay index has to be valid so this also throws illegal argument exception if the index is not valid 
index is not valid if this is less than zero or greater than number of elements if index is equal to number of elements then inserting add number of elements is basically adding at the end of the list okay so if index is less than number of elements we handle it separately else we simply add it at the end of the list so we simply say add x okay so you have to insert the new element at this particular index that is if my array was something like this okay i'll say 17 8 43 11 and 29 and other three are zeros 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 number of elements are 5 1 2 3 4 5 and capacity is 8 if i say insert 2 at 3 so index 3 should get the value 2 and everything should from here should shift right so my array should now become index 0 remains the same index 1 remains 8 index 2 remains the same index 3 gets 2 because we have to insert 2 at index 3 and the other values 11 and 29 shift right so index 4 has 29 index 5 index 4 has 11 5 has 29 and the other two are zeros number of elements is now 6 capacity remains the same all right so the location which at which you have to insert will take the value and all the values starting from this index are shifted right once and you also have to take care of resizing of the array if the array is full okay so if num elements equal to capacity we resize okay then we create space for this new element okay so in order to create space we have to shift everything starting from index to the number of elements by one so we can say for int i equal to num elements i is greater than index i minus minus and array of i equal to array of i minus one okay we start shifting from the right end okay that is to say if you have to shift starting from index 3 okay 11 and 29 should come here we start from here which is num elements equal to 5 i equal to num elements i is greater than index so i takes value 5 and then i takes value 4 okay array of i equal to array of i minus 1 so the first for the first iteration array of i equal to array of i minus 1 so 29 comes here okay in the next iteration i comes here array of i equal to array i minus 1 so 11 comes here which we want 11 comes here 29 comes here and then we set the value at this index array of index equal to x and num elements plus plus okay testing this now so i'll say insert at index 0 okay insert say 23 at index 0 i'll say list 1 dot insert at index 23 at index 0 okay so you will see we'll have 23 at index 0 okay everything else is shifted 10 20 70 100 10 7 11 2 3 4 and size is incremented by one capacity remains the same let's insert at say index uh, 3 insert 2 at 3 okay at index 3 insert 2 at index 3 okay so 0 1 2 3 there we should have two here we have two here rest of this is shifted okay if i want to insert at the last index so i insert 25 at last index okay so insert 25 at list one dot size it should be okay so i should get the last value as 25 okay at the last index 25 is here okay so my insert is working fine too the next one is get array okay so get array will return an array which will be exactly of the size of all the elements okay so in this case we have some extra capacity right that is when you run this we have some extra capacity so you see uh, size is 13 capacity is 32 when we return an array it should be exactly of the size 13 containing all the values in the original order so for that i'll say public int array get array okay so i create an array 
temp of the size equal to number of elements okay i iterate the entire array so i start with zero i go till less than num elements and i do i plus plus i say temp of i equal to array of i and i return okay so i will say uh, int array arr is list one dot get array okay so sys out uh, array length should be the same as the list size so when i run this okay my array length is 13 and my list size should be 13 as well and this should hold for any possible output so if i have an output somewhere in between oh i have to just do arr sorry okay uh array length is 16 for list size 16 okay and you can print the array as well let me write a helper function to print so static void print array okay int arr okay so when i print array i pass arr i should get the same elements as the list 23 10 okay all these values and all these values are the same okay let me make a couple of inserts i'll say insert 21 at 3 then insert 88 at 4 88 at 4 okay i print out the list okay and i print array by getting the array so i'll say list one dot get array okay so printing the list and printing the array so running this now so list is this size is 15 capacity is this and this is my array okay contains all the values from this list in the same order okay so my get array is fine too next is add all integer array list this so basically i want to do something like uh, public void add all integer array list uh, list okay so what i can do obviously is i can iterate all the values of list dot num elements i plus plus i can again and i can say add uh, list dot array of i. okay that is one way so if i create a temp list okay i'll say integer array list uh, list 2 equal to new integer array list list 2 dot add all okay i'll give some negative values minus 4 minus 5 and i will say list 1 dot add all list two. should i be i should be printing list two and list one now so i should have minus three minus four minus five added which is okay all right you can also implement an iterator okay and use the iterator that is you can say implements iterable of type integer iterates over a set of integers so when you add the unimplemented method which is basically to return an iterator so i'll write a private class integer array list iterator implements okay this particular interface okay and you add methods okay and here in this case you simply return a new object of okay so whenever you are implementing an iterator you have to write these two methods has next and next has next if uh, is true if there is a next value to return and next returns the next value so this will have an index okay so my has next will be true let me just write a constructor as well okay so index starts with zero okay this is not needed but this is i'm doing this explicitly so that you understand that you have to iterate values of this integer list from left to right so the first index is zero and it goes till less than number of elements so hash next is true if index is less than 
num elements okay and next is going to be int next integer is going to be array of this particular index okay which is starting from zero which will increment when you call next and then you return next integer okay the point of having an iterator is i can simply iterate all the values of an integer array list using a for each group okay so i can iterate all the values of this integer array list object and i can simply say add i this works fine too and this will be very helpful okay now when i run this i get the same output okay so i can write system dot out dot print ln uh, values of list one or integers of list one okay and i can say for int i in list one okay sys out i plus okay two spaces this time and sys out and then so when i run this okay you see i have integers of list one i iterated 23 10 20 uh, 21 88 270 100 10 7 11 2 3 4 25 minus 2 minus 4 minus 5 okay so we have our iterator 2 okay and we have add all the final is sort okay so i can say public int sort and takes a boolean flag for ascending or descending okay ascending now I am returning an array because I want to sort the values in ascending or descending order and create the array that contains those values in corresponding uh, respectively descend, ascending or descending order because I don't want to change the original order of this list. I want to preserve the original order of the list because that is important and once I sort I lose the original order if I just sort the underlying array this array. Okay. So what I am going to do is if I have to sort in ascending order. Okay. I am simply going to get okay an ARR array or you, can, you can take array as well from get array okay I am going to use arrays dot sort to sort this array and I am simply going to return array okay else if it is in descending order I am going to get the array again sort in descending order which we see how and return array okay so i'll say int uh, ascending order is list one dot sort in ascending order okay analysis is out uh, print ln elements in ascending order okay i'll say call this print array function pass ascending order okay and okay so when i run this my last output is all the values in ascending order okay exactly all the values no extra values in the array so for descending what we can do is i can again sort in ascending order okay and then reverse the array so sort and then iterate length by 2 okay swap ith and n minus i minus ith values and I have already posted a video on how to reverse an array. So you can say in temp is array of i. Array of i is array of array dot length minus i minus 1. And array of array dot length minus i minus 1 is temp. Okay. So when you do sort descending order, you pass false. You say in descending order pass descending order okay so you see you get descending order okay so your sort is fine too you can write your own sort but there is no point writing the sort when you can simply sort and reverse this is a simpler method okay and even if you write your own code the runtime of this is not slower because this is n log n this is n so n log n plus n will give you n log n only okay all right so i guess we are done with all the functions yes we are done with all the functions okay so this was the integer array list class okay and when i post the link for this video i will share uh, this code much cleaner i mean i'll just uh, make sure that there are right amount of comments and i'll add comments before each function as well 
so it will give you a better idea of what is happening right and i will also try to include uh, the link for a j unit test case class that tests all these functions all these constructors comprehensively with all possible test cases right so if you have any doubts if there is a part you do not understand please let me know in the comments i always try to answer all your comments and you can also let me know in the comments if there is a question you want to solve or if there is a concept you want to discuss so please let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments please like this video subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching